Let us learn about parse trees. So parse trees are just a way to visualize um, how a grammar accepts a certain string. They are, in a way, very similar to our reduction graphs that we use to represent accepting a string in an NFA, if you remember that. So um, let us consider the following grammar. And this is a grammar that is representing an arithmetic, arithmetic, arithmetic expression. So you have the starting variable, which is E for expression, and then you have another variable, L, for literal. And in this expression, in this grammar, sorry, we have one, two, three, four, five, six rules. So the first one is saying if you have an expression, you can, re it, you can read this in two ways. First one is E produces E times E. Another way is an expression is either a multiplication, a division, or a literal. Right? Or you can think of it as E produces E times E, or E produces E divided by E, or E produces a literal. And the literal here we just chose, chose 2, 4, and 8. So the question is, what is the result of this uh, expression? And this is actually an infamous expression that was discussed in uh, Twitter. People were very confused at what was the result of this. For now, let's table that discussion and let's, and let's give a left to right derivation example. So how would we do this? We could write, oops. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we start from E and then we use the rule one, uh, actually, we could do it either way. Let's do um, 2 and let's do E times, sorry, E divided by E. And then we do, we can do um, left again because we're saying we're doing a left to right. So let's do um, now multiplication, which is 1. So we do E times E divided by E. And then let's do the left hand side uh, which is 8 so first we replace that by L so we do 1 2 3 so 3 L times E divided by E arrow and what we do let's replace L by 8 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so rule number 6 and we have 8 times E divided by E Okay, now what I want to do, I want to replace this E by L, so we're going to use 3 again. We have 8 times L divided by E, arrow, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So rule 4, we replace 8 times 2 divided by E. And then we want to replace E by L. Replace e by l would be 3, that's 8 times 2 divided by l, arrow uh, 3. And then we replace this l by uh, 4, which is, uh, I guess, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, exactly. So you have 8, 2, 4. So we see that. Indeed, there is a derivation that starts with the starting variable and is able to accept 8 times 2 divided by 4. Oh, actually, I flipped the variables. I flipped the divided with multiply, but you get the picture. So this is actually, with the correct order, a derivation, and we are doing it from left to right. Um, and you could imagine that this represents parsing 8 divided by 2 together and then multiplied by 4, which give, yields 16 if you want, if you interpret this as an arithmetic expression. Of course, this is just tokens. We really don't care about their meaning, but their structure is like this. So we could represent the way we interpret the rules 
in a tree-like fashion where the leaves are read from, in this case because the tree is uh, like laying down, um, you have four, where is the four? You have eight divided by two multiplied by four. Right, so you have the whole structure of how you got there. Let's see, you start with E, and that represents this expression. We replace that by the multiplication. So we have the multiplication token here, which is a terminal. No further, no further, um, because it is a terminal, there's no further uh, children of this node. And then here we have an expression, an expression. We replace this sub-expression on the left with uh, L and then uh, whoops, with E and an L and an 8 and then you have the division and from E would be this E which you then point to L which is this step from here to here and then L to 2 from here to here and finally the right hand side E which is this E eventually you represent E by L, so E by L, and L by 4, L by 4. So the parse tree gives you actually a visual way of representing the, the derivation, saying which rules you applied, but it actually has a very important meaning. So if you really care about what the rules are saying, and we do care about that in terms of, you know, in terms of semantic of precedence of operators, if you interpret it in this way with this given tree, you would get 8 divided by 2, right? multiplied by 4 because the multiplication is here but if you actually interpret 8 divided by in parentheses 2 multiplied by 4 then you would have this other derivation tree which would give you another structure and that is a different meaning right the result would be 1 so in a lot of texts it does matter the order in which you evaluate these things, um, but in general, in grammars, uh, when we look at grammars, we really don't care. For this grammar, we could both are possible. So it might be important to know whether a grammar admits unique derivations or if there's any ambiguity, like there is in this language right here. So this language is, is we say that this grammar is ambiguous because there are two different parse trees for the same string. That means that there are two distinct ways of replacing variables that yield a different tree structure for the, and accept the same string. And as we know, the tree structure can actually represent different meanings. That is very important, not just in programming languages, but in natural language as well. Okay, so in our next video, we're gonna be formalizing context-free grammars.